look at your name and say, neighbor, there is a dimension in Christ for you to enter. In John chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, and of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. And of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. There is a newer dimension, a fresher dimension in Christ that is open for us to enter into. And God shall be giving us an encounter today in Jesus' name. Have your seat before the Lord. Amen. Capturing, capturing dimensions in Christ. Capturing dimensions in Christ. The name of Jesus is potent in you according to the dimension of Christ that you have captured. The name of Jesus is potent in you in accordance to the dimension of Christ that you have captured. This is what makes it that in the realm of the spirit there are many Jesuses. Somebody here? There are many what? In the realm of the spirit there are many Jesus. The dimension of Christ that you have captured is what gives authority. It's what gives validity to the realm in which you are operating. There are dimensions you need to capture. The purpose of every spiritual sacrifice and exercise that we engage as believers is not for mundane things. It's not for material things. It is not to become physically alone. If your race as a believer in exercising in God, in the pursuit of God, is to become physically then you have lost the real thing that we are actually running after. The Bible said to them that believe it, it gives them power to become sons of God. Sons of God. So what you are actually running after is a capacity to be a son of God, first of all spiritually, then manifested in the physical realm. So, you cannot be what you are not in the spirit. Even though you claim. So, to lay a claim on a thing is different from being the thing. There are baptisms that precede this capturing. Somebody say baptisms. There are baptisms that precede the dimension of Christ that we capture. Amen. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the Bible said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name. He said, Be baptized in the name. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So there is a possibility of being baptized into the name of Jesus Christ. It is the baptism into the name that gives you authority in the name. The baptism into the name gives you authority in the name. Be baptized in the name. 
not just to be soaked in water not just to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues those are versions being baptized in the name is accessing the fullness of these things that have already been given unto you and using them to possess whatever is available in God the dimension of God that you have captured scripturally and spiritually it will determine your experience the dimension of God you capture scripturally and spiritually it will determine your experiences in Christ There are levels to this. If you don't know it, you are, you are living in ignorance. There are levels to the dimension of understanding. There are levels to the dimension of revelation. Scripturally so. And spiritually too, there are levels to the dimension of spiritual encounters revelation and walk with God there are levels of grace just as the Bible said of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace and of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace No believer is limited to a certain level of spiritual experience in Christ. Tell your neighbor, say no believer is limited. You are not limited to a level of spiritual experience. You are not limited. No believer is limited to a level of spiritual encounter. In Titus 2.11, it said the grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. So no believer is limited to possibilities in Christ. The exercises, the longings of our soul, they are the things that take us there. In Hebrew chapter 4 and verse 2, it said, This gospel is being preached to them and unto us. The gospel profited them not because it was not mixed with faith. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 16, it said, The kingdom of God is being preached and all men present into it. So the demarcation line is the level of the pressing of the child of God. So no believer is limited by God himself in revelation, in spirituality, and in encounters. However, we must know that there are conditions for capturing this dimension in Christ. You are not a revelation of what you speak. You are a revelation of what you have become. So to speak a word is different from being a word. That is why you see a child of God will have a dream and in that dream an entity will come to him and in that dream this child of God will see that I am a child of God then the entity that came he will say in the name of Jesus Christ. The entity too will tell you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will sit on you, molest you, and go away. There are entities that will come to you and tell you, Jesus, I know. Who are you? Jesus, I know. Who are you? So, there, there are levels to which you can manipulate the name of Jesus. 
there are levels to which you can use the name of Jesus if you do not desire an encounter if you do not capture newer dimensions in God you must have it at the back of your mind your limitation is in you not in God the Bible said Elijah is a man who has a like passion as you are Elijah was a man who has like passion as you are. He had a like passion as you are. He was weak as you are. He used to be tired as you are. He used to be discouraged as you are. Even scripturally so. He was discouraged that, you know, God has left him alone and he was the only standing prophet in his mind. Until God told him, I have 7,000 prophets who are anointed but hidden. Who were anointed but hidden. He said, Elijah is a man of like passion as you are. Yet, he prayed and the rain stopped for three and a half years. Yet, that same man, he prayed and the rain came back by the move of a tiny cloud by the move of a tiny cloud the rain that stopped for three and a half years came back then you who is a believer you have a small business you are seeing no future in the business Elijah did not see the rain he saw a cloud like a hand then you who have a stable income you are still afraid that you will borrow you who have a skill still believe that there is nothing for you in life yet it was a man with like passion what are the conditions for capturing the dimensions in Christ In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4 and 5, the Bible rightly speak about Jeremiah. He said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee, and before thou cometh forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee. A prophet unto the nations. I knew thee. I sanctified thee. Number one condition is that you must understand your sanctification unto God. You must understand your sanctification unto God. You must understand your sanctification unto God. A man of like passion, he was. But one thing you see is that before Jeremiah was born, God said, I sanctify thee. God said what? I sanctify thee. In verse 9, the Bible said, then the Lord put forth his hands and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my word in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over nations and over kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. A, Jeremiah was sanctified to speak. Somebody says sanctified. sanctified. To speak. He was sanctified to speak. His mouth was sanctified by the Lord even before he was born. The man did not stop at being sanctified by the Lord. As he grew, he grew into the sanctification of his mouth. That means that Jeremiah understood that his mouth was sanctified. He understood that his mouth had a purpose in God. 
he sought the face of God until the sanctifi sanctification that he was sanctified unto God before his birth was actualized in time. Is somebody here? I pray it will not be too hard for you to grab. You must understand your sanctification in order to capture the dimension of Christ that matters to your life. The sanctification of Moses when he got to the burning bush the Lord said unto Moses he said put up the shoe from your leg for the place which thou, thou art is what? a holy ground Moses was sanctified that in the presence of God he can stand toe to toe with God is somebody here? He can start. So when you who do not understand your sanctification sees Moses standing on a holy ground with his bare foot, you stand with your bare foot too. You can't experience the same thing because you were not sanctified to be on foot. The Bible said of John the Baptist, he said he came eating locusts and honeycomb. And he was putting on animal skin. That was his sanctification. And in your sanctification is your preservation. It is in your sanctification that your encounter is guaranteed. He understood that this work is the work that keeps God alive in me. There was no middle ground. There are those of you now, you have clocked 50 years in God. You don't understand your certification. You don't know that every month God demands a fast from you. And you want to call Jesus and devils who fear. They won't. You don't understand your sanctification to know that this thing is abominable unto me. Even though people are touching it, I can't. As a believer, you must understand your sanctification. Listen, John came eating honeycomb and locust. But Jesus that he came to introduce, the Bible said, and the son of man came eating and drinking. And they said, hey, behold, the gluten. So Jesus' sanctification was of the spirit, not of the flesh and blood. They could not understand. If a man introduced a man, A man who will refuse to wear clothes now introduce somebody who is wearing clothes. A man who refuses to eat food is now introducing somebody who is eating and drinking. Even he went to a wedding and gave them wine to drink. Did the Bible tell you that it is juice? Have you want to tell me that they, they drank that wine, all of them drank half a cup? Don't twist the Bible. He gave them wine. They said, beyond the gluten. But this man understood his sanctification unto God. Listen, nobody can understand your sanctification with God. You consciously walk, you consciously discover it. The work of a true Christian is a work of discovery. Is what? A work of discovery. There are things you do that put you in the right book with God. There are things that once you stop doing it, you come out of your covering. You miss your covering. Many have been 20 years Christian. You don't know what to do as a believer that gives you a steady spiritual growth. Many believers don't know how many hours they are supposed to clock in the presence of God every morning or every week or every month. There is no special separation. There is no special fast that you understand that, okay, when I do this level of fast, this is the result it gives me. When I do this level of giving, this is what it gives me. 
then how do you capture Christ? How do you capture a newer dimension? If it came by chance, you will lose it by chance. That is why you are hot and cold. That is why today you are on fire. Tomorrow you are, you are on a charcoal. <laughs> charcoal. Look at your neighbor's eyes and say, understand your sanctification. You don't have a middle ground. You don't have what? A, until you understand your sanctification. In Judges chapter 13 and verse 5, a child was born and before he was born, the angel Gabriel went to his parents and he practically gave them an instruction. This instruction was the instruction of life, the life and the lifetime of this man that was born. Without the understanding of this, this man would be a failure as soon as he was born. It would be what? A failure as soon as he was born. The angel of the Lord spoke to him and he said, Judges 13 and verse 5. He said, For lo, there shall conceive, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no, and no what? No razor shall come on his head. So if you give back to your own child and you say no razor shall come on his head. That is not his sanctification. He said, no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be what? A Nazareth unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. This sanctification was what led to the preservation of the Egyptians, I mean the Israelites. Without understanding, in fact, he understood it, he knew it, and he lost it by carelessness. He lost it by carelessness. But he knew it. The dimension of Christ that you desire is within your sanctification. It's within your sanctification. It's a Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. It said, Having therefore these promises, let us therefore, having therefore these promises, let us therefore sanctify our spirit and our flesh from all feediness. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. It's a perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Having therefore these promises, let us therefore. Now, if you don't know what you are to cleanse yourself from, how do you begin? Sanctified unto the Lord. This was what made the dimension of God to be visible. It made the dimension of God to be open. In Luke chapter 7 verse 34, they were talking about Jesus. They said, look at the gl gluten man. He's eating and drinking. But they do not know when Jesus separates himself. Amen. Amen. They did not know when Jesus separated himself. They were looking at his costly apparel that he was wearing. There was nothing pitiable about Jesus. Amen? If Jesus' body was pitiable, soldiers would not be sharing his cloth. Amen? Soldiers would not be what? They cast lots to claim his what? Cloth. So he was not a poor man. I mean, do they do they do, do do you cast lots to share the cloth of a beggar? 
soldiers were casting lot. Who will carry this cloth? The cloth was not just removed from his body and thrown away. But he was sanctified. His sanctification was of the spirit. Somebody say of the spirit. Every New Testament believer must understand that whatever you are doing in God, for it to have the life of Christ in it, it must be sanctified of the spirit. It must be what? Sanctified of the spirit. Your reward is in the sanctification of your every spiritual sacrifices, every spiritual endeavor. Every spiritual what? Endeavor. So you being a giver, you must be sancti a sanctified giver. If not, you are not more than a philanthropist in the house of God. You must be a sanctified worshiper so that Christ is in you. So your voice will not be like a hired singer. You know, a hired singer will sing up. It will minister to the brain, the cerebral of the people, but spiritually it touch nothing. Their spirit cannot receive the song. After five days, they are still singing it. When their spirit receives the song, in the dream they will sing it. When their spirit receives, because if you minister by the spirit, the spirit will hear. If you minister by the flesh, the flesh will clap. Sanctified by the Spirit. Jesus came sanctified of the Spirit. Your spiritual dimension that you have in Christ must be through sanctification. What are the conditions for capturing a new dimension in Jesus? Faith. Somebody say faith. And this faith is in the work of faith. Is in what? The work of faith. And in the spirit of faith. You know, one of the things that baffles me most is that when people listen to me like this and I'm preaching so hard and there's no Bible in your front, there's no Bible in your hand, I just encourage myself to understand that maybe you have a computer brain. You understand? You have a photographic eye so that nothing misses your bewilderment. Everything I say, you know. But I don't see you growing spiritually without something to refer to. A work of faith and the spirit of faith is what guarantees you changing position. A work of faith and a spirit of faith is what guarantees you changing position spiritually, encountering a new dimension in God so that when God speak, you walk in faith, even though there is doubt on your head let it not be in your heart if it's in your heart it will affect your body your body will not be able to move there are moments of your life that your leg have to carry you even though your head is telling you something else work of faith is what you need. God told Moses, I mean God told Abraham, he told Abraham, take your only son in Genesis 22. Isaac, your only son, go to a mountain 
and go and sacrifice him for me. Abraham stood up. He walked in faith because that place was not his backyard. That place was not a stone throw. He walked in faith even though there is doubt in his head. He walked in faith until he got to where God was. This walk of faith is what brought him into an encounter to encounter the Jehovah Jireh. The Jehovah Jireh. Now, he could not have encountered God as Jehovah Jireh on his bed without a walk of faith. That was the only thing. Listen to me. Why you have never known God as my provider, even though you have read that he is the provider. The written word will never be sent to you until you walk with it. Somebody here. The written word will never be what? Sent to you until you walk with it. You walk with it in the spirit of faith. You labor with it in the spirit of faith. The potency of the written word is dormant until it is the sent word. It is the sent word that performs. He sent his word and his word he led them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. The Bible said in Isaiah 55, he said, my word will proceed from my mouth. It will not return to me until it has performed that which is said, not that which is written. So there are many things that are written that will not happen. This is where believers are exhausted. Every walk of faith that you walk with God makes the word the, sent, the written word become a sent word. So a little obedience of a little obedience of giving can send a word of healing. Is somebody here? A little obedience of what? Giving can send a word of healing. So it is not just in the prayer. A little obedience of giving can send a word of healing. The sent word and the healing and the written word are not the same. God had to empty a man so that he can fill the man. Say, so give now your only son. Your only son. And after that, he now saw God as the provider. Jehovah, Jireh. For any man who will begin to encounter God's provision or God's providence, God's providence is on the platform of you giving all. If you have never tasted giving all, you can never see God's providence. True God's providence comes when a man knows how to walk with God, when God demands all. It's an exercise. It doesn't fall on people's lap. On his bed, he couldn't have become Jehovah Jiri. It was on his leg as he walked that he became Jehovah Jiri. The walk of faith. The walk of faith made Jehovah Jiri visible. The walk of faith made Jehovah Jiri visible. That dimension of God, will, nobody will tell him any longer that God provides. Do you think that ram got lost? Oh, you can say that. You thought that ram got lost. There was a dimension of the spirit that was broken for a spiritual ram to cross. Oh, you are not here. You don't believe it. You don't, you don't, you know, you doubt the Lord. You are begging. <laughs> Somebody suffered in the house for 14 years he labored and there was nothing to show for it. There was nothing to show for it. 
nothing to show for it until God until God by revelation came unto Jacob praise God until God by revelation came unto Jacob and when God came unto Jacob in a dream of the night he showed him in Genesis 31 verse 11 and the angel of the Lord spake unto me in a dream saying Jacob and I said here am I and he said, lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which live upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grisled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. And I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointed the pillar, where thou vowest a vow unto me. And now arise, get thee out from this land and return into the land of thy kindred. In one night, God gave him the the sheep that were grisled and speckled. When he woke up, he only experimented what he saw in the dream. The sheep and the goat and the ram, they drank from the water with the ring streak. They took in under 24 hours and delivered. And delivered. So you want to tell me that those ram that Jacob had, they are not from the spirit. Listen, whatever you have that is not from the spirit, you will lose again. Okay. Have you not seen somebody that went to beg someone for help? And when he got the help, in fact, he went to beg for money. Give me one million. And they gave him one million. After one year, he needs 10,000 again. Huh? You've not seen before. He was given 1 million under 12 months. He needed what? 10,000 naira again. Not. He needed 10,000 for help. In fact, critical 10,000. Not urgent 10,000. Critical one. Critical one. Whatever you are not given spiritually. If you have it physically, you lose it again. This is the basis of rising and falling. It was given. The sheep, the goat, the ram, spiritually. And Jacob increased. He expanded overnight. What he lost for 14 years. Listen to me. He got it in one night. What he lost for 14 years. It is not the time to travel in the physical that matters. It's how far you travel in the spirit. He traveled in the spirit. And he got to a place where sheep and goat and ram are. There is a dimension of God that is called provision. It is in the spirit, not physical. It is not in a country. It is not in a state. It is in the realm of the spirit. When you are sent to that place, you just see that if you need, it provided. You need, it's provided. There is a dimension called healing. Where healing, you become a, you, a, you carry an embodiment of healing. So when people come to you, they are healed. You did not go to be healed. You are now carrying a healing virtue. When God blesses a man, it becomes an embodiment of blessing. So that when a, anybody causes that man, he's caused. When he blesses that man, he's blessed with what he carries. A walk of faith. A walk of faith. And the spirit of faith, the Holy Ghost. A conscious travel in the spirit. Listen, if your spirit is not liberated, you have gained nothing for coming here. If you spend six months here, 
your prayer life is still the same. You are still fasting the same. You are praying the Holy Ghost. You are, your mouth is still tight. You know, you are frustrating the move of God. Very soon, God will use somebody to push you to the back. You will become a backbencher. When you are not given spiritually, you can't have it. That is why you need again. When you are given spiritually, all that you need is an inertia. Somebody say inertia. What is an inertia? It is what you use to kickstart. In fact, Christ himself never doubled five loaves of bread and two fishes until there was something to kickstart it. Elisha the prophet did not feed 100 people until there was food for 10 people. When there was food for 10 people, he was able to feed 100 people. So, the fact that what you have is small is not what matters. It's the capacity to double up in the spirit. From 120, they become 5,000 in one day by the spirit. Not because they went to learn Arabic, proselyte, Aramaic. They did not go and learn their languages. The Holy Ghost came upon them in Acts chapter 2 and they multiplied. They were localized, hidden on top of the upper room. But in one day, they became international. It is not where your business is located that is a problem. Jesus was born in a manger. His star was seen in the east. There is nothing hidden under the face of the sun. You need a liberation of your spirit more than the liberation of your father's house. When Jacob wrestled with God to recover his destiny, he did not wrestle with the demon of his father's house. He wrestled with God. When you increase the light, darkness disappears. There are two sides to every coin. Decide what you are spending. Faith is a function of a walk in the spirit. Our fellowship is to lead us into the place that we were in eternity. Until your fellowship leads you into eternity, you have not fellowshiped. So for those of you that used to spend some time with God and you feel like you have arrived. There was a man in Genesis chapter 5 verse 24. The Bible said, Enoch walked with God and was not. For Enoch not to be, he walked into eternity. Amen? He came from, when, it is when a man comes from eternity into time that he becomes. But when you walk from time into eternity, you become not. Enoch walked with God and he was not. We walk into eternity. The purpose of our fellowship is to be able to walk into eternity in lifetime or outside of lifetime. And we all know that Enoch was not the only man that died, that, that did not see death before his death. Amen? They did not, he did not see death before his death. So there are men that are still taken today. They did not die. They are taken. Oh, you, are, you, are, you don't get it. Maybe because they buried their body. They were taken. They did not die. There are men that are taken. They didn't die. God took them. Our fellowship is to lead us into the place where we were before we were given a body. So you can see how large this expansion of room is. Faith. The flexibility of our faith. It will lead us into what we can capture in Christ. It will lead us into what we can become in Christ. It will lead us into newer dimensions in Christ. Our walk in the spirit. I have seen a lot of people who work with God and they obtain results by the Spirit. I 
there are many things that you are looking at as not possible impossible it is because you have not journeyed there when you journey there you will know that there is nothing called impossibility what are the conditions for capturing the new dimensions in Christ decisions and obedience decisions and what in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 it said if ye be willing and obedience ye shall eat the fruit of the land there are certain dimensions of Christ you can't experience without a decision that is made a decision that is made without a decision that is made there are dimensions you can't experience it can only end up as a wish it can only continue to be a desire it can only continue to be a desire God is revealed through us by our pressing into him God is revealed through us by our pressing into him the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due time, he will raise you up. Decisions and obedience brought men into encounter in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. A decision, look, your Conscious and unconscious decision is taking you somewhere. <laughs> These Hebrew boys, they were not careless people. They were not careless with their life. They had a testimony. Somebody say a testimony. They had a testimony. Just like David, who killed a lion with his hands, who killed a bear with his hands? When Goliath came, he remembered the Lord God who fought that battle alone with him. And he said, God had delivered the lion into my hands and the bear. He will deliver you, oh uncircumcised Philistine, into my hands. Who defy the armies of God? He had a testimony. Now, that was exactly what happened to the Hebrew boys. When they got into Babylon, they decide who they were for. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, and the Bible said, And Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. Daniel proposed in his heart. Since you got into that company, you have not made a decision for Christ. The day they want to sack you, that's the day you know you are serving a living God. They will sack you. What has been your decision? What has been your work? What is your testimony in that place? I was working somewhere many years ago. And because of the nature of the place, because it's a very good company, People are always sad. In fact, you can cough and be sad. <laughs> Amen. You can what? Cough and you can cough and be sad. As little as not wearing your cap to a production for it can sack you. So many funny things happen. But one thing I knew, I had a work with God. Somebody say work with God. A tangible work with God. And we had a manager that always demanded bribe. He what? He, dem he lost bribe. And I said, Lord, I can't serve God and be serving man. So when people, when they get their salary, they would love to take him to a place, maybe a bar, then still put some money in an envelope, especially when you are in his bad book. So even if you are not in his bad book what he does is that he creates a bad book for you so you don't have an option than to be in his bad book 
I said, I can't serve God and serve man. And I made a comment. I said, I will leave this job the day I want to. A decision. They had a decision. They had a decision for Christ. In Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17, they said, Daniel, they said unto Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you. We are not careful to answer you, O thou king Nebuchadnezzar. For the God we serve is able to deliver us. If not, let it be known unto you, Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow to your graven image. If not, so they were not banking on faith. Is somebody here? Yes, sir. If they were banking on faith, they would say the God we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us. No. They were banking on a made up mind. They say, if not, even if he does not deliver us, this God, we will still not bow before you. There are certain decisions that cause the presence of God. Amen? There are certain decisions that call the presence of God. They decided they were not bowing. In Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25, the presence of God was made manifest in their, in their midst. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. After eating the furnace for seven times. So, your decision to stand with God and be for God, when your affliction is increasing seven times, is to reveal a dimension of Christ to the kingdom of this world that God exists. the fires of affliction have been multiplied seven times. Your decision to still be for God is a judgment to certain nations of this world that even when you failed and bowed, people were still standing. People's testimony will judge people. People's testimony will condemn others. Jesus said, Woe unto you, Chorazin, and the neighboring nations. He said, if this miracle that were done in you were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. How many times have you seen God's goodness and inside your heart you are still acting as if God does not exist? How many times have you seen God's intervention and yet you are still acting like God does not know you? The, it is your decision that takes you. It is your decision that drives you. You press into God to see newer things. Despite all odds, you press into God. The Bible speaking in Isaiah chapter 55, it said, Come. Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. He that had no money, come ye and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Come! A decision to hunger and thirst. Somebody say hunger and thirst. The holiness of God is not just in his appearance, it's in his power. Amen? So don't be a holy and powerless Christian. Someone here? You decide to live for Christ. Good. But be powerful. Be what? Powerful. The holiness of Christ, the holiness of God is where his power resides. 
So holiness without power will still lead to mockery. Come and drink from the rivers. In John 7 38, he said, Out of he that believeth shall flow rivers of living waters. Waters, rivers, living waters, rivers of wealth, rivers of healing rivers of deliverance rivers of blessing rivers of lifting rivers of joy come and drink in the Holy Ghost a decision to press into power a decision to press into power a decision to press into the power of God I began today by telling you our spiritual exercises are not for the production of mundane things. The goal is not for you to have a car. The goal is not for you to have a house. The goal is to have your needs met. The goal is to have what? Your needs met. When you come out of God, you must look like God. You must what? Look like God. And it is the virtues of the spirit that is reflective on our life that make us look like God. Not things. The virtues of what? The spirit. Such as love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience. These are the virtues of the spirit that builds our internal spiritual man. Where your decision is still questionable, what you capture in Christ will still be questionable and unreasonable. The reason for unreasonable spiritual growth today is because of poor decision or no decision. You decide to ground yourself. You decide to halt. You decide to wait. You decide to fast. You decide to seek the face of God. Not somebody telling you, now we are going to do 21 days fasting and prayer. Cease to cease. Yeah, I mean, I cease to 11 if you do. You are not, you are not, you are not there. You've not even started. When only the time you know how to engage something spiritually is when there is a need. When there is a need. Then you know how to engage God. You know how to wake up and kill sleep. That means that when God satisfies you, you will recover the sleep you have given, you know. <laughs> oh, you know when some people fast. You know how it is. If you have, they are fasting and living with people, they are so glutinous that they say, My food for money, no chopper more. Then, afternoon, they say, Who eats my food? They will still fight on top of the food they are not meant to eat. <laughs> so that when it is night time, you will now do combination, you recover. What, can, what did you fast then? You didn't fast. The Bible rightly said in Isaiah 58, he said, is this not the fast that I've chosen that you deal your bread to the hungry? So when you fast as a Christian, do you know what you are supposed to do? Calculate the money of what you are supposed to eat. Go and give it to a hungry man. You are doing, fasting is physical and spiritual. It's not just physical. When you are fasting spiritually, you are empowering your spiritual man. Oh, you are not, some people are not happy now again. I would like go and give my money to somebody. I didn't say come and give it to me. I'm not a hungry man. You know, in church, 500 naira offering is big. But 500 naira recharge card is not big. Abi? Aha. Uh -huh. 
Is this not the fast that I've chosen to deal your bread to the hungry? Isaiah chapter 58. I didn't write it. Verse 6. That I have chosen to lose the bands of the wicked, to undo the heavy body, and to what? Let the oppressed go free, that ye break every yoke. Look at the magnificent work that comes as a result of the spiritual quickening that happens because somebody is fasting. In seven, verse 7, he said, Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. In verse 8, look at, look at, look at what happened because you fasted spiritually is different from what happens because you are fasting materially. In verse 8, he said, Then your light will break forth as the morning. If you don't fast material, you can't increase materially. You will increase spiritually and be questioned physically. The extent of what you can give will determine what you can get. He said, He that soweth sparingly shall also what? Reap sparingly. Except the seed of the corn fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. Then your light will break forth as the morning. Your health shall spring forth what? Speedy. Your health shall spring forth speedy. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. So, what implication is that? What's supposed to affect you will go and affect something else. What's supposed to hit you will hit something else. Your righteousness will go before you. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. He said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against thee, in judgment thou shalt condemn, because you have fed them. He said, this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Thy righteousness will go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. That in verse 9, look at it. Then thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. Because you heard the voice of somebody who is hungry. When you call, God will answer. If thou take away the yoke from the midst of thee, and the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking of vanity... So when you fast, it is not an opportunity to save. Look at your neighbor and look at him very well. Say so your fasting is not an opportunity to save money. So stop fasting to save. You know it's a mechanism now. The borealized economy has increased 101 or 001 in many families. Do you understand that? I mean you don't get it. You get it. If you don't get it, yeah, forget about it. The, the borderless economy has increased 001 or 101. But that is not your portion in Jesus' name. Your fasting is not an opportunity to save. It's an opportunity to give. As you are giving spiritually, you give physically, materially. Then your light breaks forth. It's a decision. You enter into consciously doing it. Not apportioned by any spiritual father or mother. When they are still telling you, you don't know it yet. The dimensions of Christ that we have will come when we desire encounter. Somebody say desire. desire. Encounter. encounter. You prepare for an encounter. You cannot time an encounter. You prepare for it. God did not tell Moses, fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Then I will appear unto you. I'm not saying God cannot give you a time to fast. 
However, when you desire an encounter, you, you prepare for it. You encourage yourself, you push yourself. In order to, when you have an encounter, you are never left the same. Amen? There is something in Jesus that drops into you. You become a carrier of a dimension. You become a carrier of a virtue. When a man has an encounter with God, what people are supposed to pray to God for, when they get to you, God releases those things to them. You may not believe it. Elijah had an encounter with God. When Elisha met him, he didn't ask God to give him a double portion. He asked Elijah to give him. It's just like coming to you and saying, Daddy, give me two of yourself. Is it possible? So a man was already carrying a portion of God. Elisha was inclined to God and mobile to a man of God. So he knows that what he wants to ask God is in this man. All he needs to do is since he's aligned with God, ask this man. If he's around Elijah and he's asking God, he won't get it. There were many sons of the prophets. Do you think they did not want the anointing of Elijah? They desired the anointing of Elijah, but none of them got it. But there was one who sought, who sought and found. Who sought and found. Because somebody trapped a portion of God and it did not take him for granted. Whatever you see any man doing easily, don't say it is luck. If you say it's luck, you are locking yourself. If you say it is what? Luck, you are locking yourself. It is a function of a particular grace to a particular level. And if you cannot do that, don't badmouth it. Encounter will never leave you the same way. You prepare for it. You want to experience God as a provider? You prepare for an encounter in God that will make you see God as a provider. You want to see God as a healer? You prepare for an encounter that makes God the healer to you. You want to see God as the deliverer you prepare for an encounter I can tell you 70% of people in this service today they are not prepared to be here they are only here because it's Sunday when you are prepared for an encounter with a governor you will not allow him to get to office before you you want your name to be number one on the list of people that are coming to see the God. In fact, your appointment is for two. You are there by eight. Your appointment is for what? Two o'clock. You are there by eight. Don't value men by what they say. Value them by what they are doing. Your hunger is not revealing what you are saying with your mouth that you need. Your hunger is is revealed by what you are thirsty for. Not just what you are saying. For every gifting in Christ is not really a gift. Not every gifting in Christ is really what? A gift. Many giftings in Christ are reward. Rise up on your feet this morning. Mali Kapori Shata. 
Oh Jesus. Say my father, my maker. I am for you. Consume me as a living sacrifice. Can you pray that prayer in the name of Jesus? My father, my God, I am for you. Consume me as a living sacrifice. 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 Consume me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you are God and you are looking at yourself right now, if you present yourself as a sacrifice unto God, are you going to accept yourself? Say, Oh Lord, my God, have mercy on me. Can you pray that prayer? Jesus. Get there, get there, get there. Mighty name, we pray. There are dimensions in Christ that until you enter into such dimension, calling the name of Jesus is futile. Calling the name of Jesus is what? Futile. Until you enter into that dimension. For this kingdom is not in words but in power. We do not speak words of fables, of enticing words of men. But we demonstrate the power of God. A believer can be a Christian and witches will still be flogging. They will still be flogging. It is because of where you are spiritually. I, I, I hear a lot of things. I hear I was somewhere to pray for somebody and all his back they've, they've drawn tattoo on all his back. They've what? Drawn tattoo all the back. How did that happen? And the man is a deacon in his church. Demons don't fear your title. They don't what? They don't fear Fear your title. They acknowledge your mantle in the spirit. It gives it power to become sons of God. Sons of God are not trampled down. Listen, Jesus. When he left his disciple and he went somewhere only to come back, he saw his disciple trying to cast out a demon from a child. And the demon refused to go. And Jesus said something. He said, Oh ye of little faith. Oh ye of little faith. But he didn't say they didn't have faith. The level of their faith was what was limiting them. If they did not have faith, they would not try to. Are you there? They would not what? Try to. So, trying to cast out that demon, they had faith. But what kind of faith did they have? They needed a God kind of faith. A God kind of faith to be able to do that kind of God's work. That faith they had was their faith. They had the word of God. They had the knowledge of God. They even had the name of Jesus in their mouth. But they did not have the spirit. It was until that encounter that Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye. The Holy Ghost. So your faith have limitation until you had God's faith by his Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The mechanism is in praying in tongues. De-emphasize it, de-emphasize yourself. 
they emphasize it, they emphasize your power. They emphasize it, they emphasize your encounters. Darkness will no longer have dominion over you. Demons will no longer stop what is coming for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You want to pray this prayer like you are not going to pray today again. And as you are praying this prayer, the power of God is going to be released. There shall be instant healing and deliverances. Right now. Raise your right hand to heaven and say, My Father, my God. My Father, my God. As I begin to pray, as I, as I begin to pray, answer me by fire. Answer me by fire. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. You want to pray this prayer this way now. And I don't know when I'm going to stop this prayer. But you are going to pray this prayer. Your vein in your body must tell you that you have prayed. Because what is happening spiritually will be transmitted into the physical. As you are praying this prayer, your body will be touching your angels. As you are praying this prayer, your body will be touching the anointing. As you are praying this prayer, your body will be receiving healing. Everything that is an embodiment of you, your business, your house, your car, everything. You are going to raise your voice and say, any power. Any power. At the back there, you are whispering, say, any power. Any power. Binding my effort. Binding my effort. Binding my results. Binding my results. Where are you? Where are you? Lose! Lose! Catch fire! Catch fire! Lose! Lose! Catch fire! Catch fire! Lose! Lose! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire!